Thank you. And uh, like Deputy Nash, I would too like to express solidarity with the workers in Terra Mines who must be very shocked at the very sudden uh, announcement. Um, and uh, it is absolutely essential that every support is put in place uh, in, in, the, in the first instance. Uh, but very little will soften the blow uh, that the, of the announcement that they that they they have just had in the last uh, in the last 24 hours. Um, I'd like to thank uh, PBP for bringing forward this bill. I think it's uh, you know if there's a time to make this change, it's now. I mean we've almost got full employment, and um, we've you know a, a historically low uh, rate of unemployment, um, and indeed employers are struggling to get workers and as already been said uh, not every employer will take advantage of uh, you know young workers paying them uh, the the uh, the, sub, uh, the 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 lower rate uh, in terms of the the minimum wage um, the price of a you know a loaf of bread or a bottle of milk really doesn't matter um, you know depending on your age you, you know whatever you have it'll it, it, it only stretches across the same, um, uh, you know, if you, if you, and, and, if, and there's a presumption, it's almost a middle class kind of notion that this is pocket money or something for young people. Very often, I certainly have come across young people and this is absolutely critical uh, for themselves individually or as a contribution to, uh, to the family income uh, in, in keeping the, um, uh, the show on the road, if you like. Now, I would have a particular affinity with equal pay for week, equal work, because I was actually sitting in, a, uh, in, in an office one day and I got equal pay for doing the same amount of work as the person who was sitting next to me. Uh, that was in the early 1970s. And you've no idea how corrosive it is to sit there watching somebody being paid more and doing exactly the same job as you're doing. Um, and that's their experience, their first experience in the workforce is, is this experience of, of being discriminated against. And you have no idea the, the campaign that was waged against equal pay uh, uh, for equal work uh, when it came to uh, paying women equal pay. And in fact, I think you could look now and say that our economy has benefited benefit hugely from having a, a larger number of women in the workforce, which wouldn't have happened if we had kept that discrimination. Um, and like, it, it is utterly corrosive. It's not just about what your money will stretch to. There is an emotional uh, feeling to being discriminated against that stays with you. Um, and you know, I think that should be that should be uh, factored into this. I mean, there's all sorts of arguments. I remember the letters pages, you know, and the editorials around that time, and you know, the, you know, everything was going to collapse because women were going to be paid equal pay. And there's kind of a same sense of, of the same kind of scaremongering kind of feel uh, to, to, the, to this. And I think there is absolutely no reason, if somebody's doing the same work, absolutely no reason why they shouldn't be paid the same. And indeed, why should good, work, uh, good employers be undercut by, uh, you know, by, by those who will take advantage by keep on rotating workers where they will get younger workers uh, in and undercut by, uh, by, by, uh, by doing, that, uh, doing that repeatedly, which, which can happen. Um, the, uh, and I, I really don't think the argument in relation to young workers dropping out of education really holds water. And I think that has been proved to be the case. And in fact, indeed, if you were to look at a situation now where there is full employment, um, this is the perfect time to, to do an, an analysis on that. Um, and uh, I, I, as I say, I just don't believe that, that it holds water. Um, it's discriminatory and unnecessarily pun punitive, treating people uh, differently just based on their age. Um, Young people, uh, as workers, continue to be exploited, running the risk of, of, of being le let go when it comes time for their employers to increase their wage, uh, only for the employer to hire uh, someone younger. Now, that, that kind of thing is the kind of thing that we should be, uh, you know, really highlighting, um, because there's no doubt that for some employers that that, that happens. Um, the... Uh, I mean, if we start looking at where we sit in terms of, and we keep on t 
talking about how, uh, you know, how well uh, the, I will we'll keep on being told how well the country is doing. Um, if we start looking at how we compare to other jurisdictions, other jurisdictions are not relying on this kind of discrimination, um, and uh, you know. Uh, and we should be looking to our European counterparts. And indeed, it was the European, the EEC at the time when we joined the European Union that actually were pivotal in making that change in relation to equal pay for equal work when it came to when it came to women. Um, and we should be looking at the signals that are coming from exactly the same location uh, in relation to. Uh, the discrimination that is occurring in relation to, to young workers, and I do feel that uh, the, you know, the if you start looking at how younger people are generally being treated in this country, everything from uh, being locked out of home ownership. I know it's not we're not talking about this, you know, very young people here, but uh, but we are we're you're seeing that there's a cohort of people being locked out. They're the ones that are going to suffer the uh, the pension uh, time bomb in years to come. And yet, they're, they're kind of being discriminated at, uh, or, or being adversely affected at every, uh, at, at every hand's turn. So, you know, I just don't think that there is um, any argument to continue this. I mean, we, not only should, we, should there be equality in terms of the minimum wage, obviously uh, we would advocate that we move towards a, a living wage um, and we're creeping slowly towards that. Um, but within that context, there can't be a scenario where you would be looking at, um, at, low, uh, at, 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 at a differential in relation to age. Um, I, I think the... Um, uh, I mean, the idea that, you know, uh, somebody just, you know, mere months uh, of a difference has paid a, a different amount, a different amount really kind of uh, high, highlights uh, the issue. But you are seeing um, now, you're seeing students, for example, um, really struggling to kind of put uh, a, a roof over their head in, in terms of college, very often having to work. The idea that they would be doubly discriminated on by virtue of the fact that they, uh, if they do get a job, that they can be paid uh, lower uh, if they happen to be under 20. And that can happen uh, and does happen. So, look, I, I just don't think that there is any argument for it. And I would ask, to, ask you to look at uh, just how beneficial it was to, um, for women to be paid equal, equal pay when it comes to the contribution to the workforce and to understand that this is more than just about an economic matter. This is, uh, this is uh, about um, forming a view of, of um, uh, what, what the world of work is like and starting out by the very first thing that you experience is being treated in, in a way that is less favourable to somebody that is, happens to be maybe a year older than you. I just, just don't think it stands up. Thank We're you.